One of the most important things in watercolour painting is to reserve your light. Here I'm using some framing tape, a little bit like masking tape, just a bit more gentle on the watercolour paper. And I'm just sort of blocking out this area here. So as you saw there, I used a wax crayon to um, rub onto the watercolour paper, which will reserve more light as well. And it will resist the watercolour as well, creating some really nice effects. I'm using my size eight brush and I've mixed up a little bit of quinacridone gold and ultramarine and I'm just sort of painting quite randomly sort of maybe some distant trees and I'm using my spritzer bottle now to wet the sheet of paper it's 300 grams it's hot pressed and as I say it's on the back of an old painting um, and I'm spattering here with some just sort of dirty water really um, it's got the quinacridone gold in there and I've got a little bit of Payne's grey in there as well so there's puddles this is a great big brush I usually use for acrylic painting and I'm just sort of wetting everything here um, just to sort of start off really just painting wet in wet so I'm spattering some of the bluey sort of ultramarine with a touch of yellow in there um, just again randomly I what I'm trying to get here is sort of happy accidents and I want what I'm doing here to kind of suddenly something hopefully will appear and I'll then sort of go off in that direction but mainly these are kind of trees and foliage and grasses and that's what I'm painting here with my size 14 brown brush nice big brush big area spattering and sloshing that paint on and as I say it's so therapeutic um, what I'm doing now is I'm using a cut up old bank card and I'm actually just printing on some marks there with a little bit of the quinacridone gold and the ultramarine and now I'm tilting everything letting everything run down sometimes that can give the effect of tree trunks in the distance there but again I'm just sort of looking for something interesting um, to happen so what I'm doing now is I'm just sort of using the plastic card again to print in um, some darker marks with the ultramarine. It's literally paint squeezed straight from the tube and you can sort of just decide on sort of any sort of colours. But I've got really a sort of burnt sienna, quinacridone gold, a little bit of lemon yellow, ultramarine and Payne's grey. And I will put a list of these colours in the description below, along with alternative colours. And I'll also include a full list of the materials I'm using and some alternatives to those. But a lot of the stuff I've got from around the house are all old art materials. So you don't have to spend a fortune. I'm mixing up here some Payne's Grey with the Ultramarine. It's got a tiny bit of yellow in there. So it's really dark. And of course, I've got that framing tape there protecting that light area. I'm using some brush show now I will put a link in the description as well about a video I made all about brush show but it's a lovely medium I would say with brush show less is more in this instance I'm not worried too much so I'm really tapping that little drum letting the brush show sort of fall onto the wet surface creating some interesting colors and some lovely sort of textures as well this is just ordinary table salt you can use sea salt and I'm sprinkling it quite randomly on to the damp surface do allow that to dry naturally this is a twig from the garden I've sharpened it with a pencil sharp and I'm scratching into the damp surface so you can get some lovely dark thin lines just to warn you though once you scratch it is permanent but um, I feel like I can really loosen up using a twig it feels very natural especially if you're using it to um, sort of paint trees now this is a watercolour pencil and a sort of an emery board um, used to file your nails. You can use sandpaper instead, but here's a close up. So you rub the watercolour pencil onto the emery board there and the pigment falls onto the wet surface and you get quite a nice effect. It's not quite the same as brush show, but it is quite a nice alternative to brush show if you don't have any. And it does create some lovely, interesting sort of textures. And the other thing you can do is draw with the watercolor pencil as well onto the damp surface and it creates some lovely soft, dark lines. And you can use lots of different colors as well. But as you can see, I'm scribbling here and warming up really it's a great way of warming up before you actually start a painting just warm up sort of throwing all these different materials at your painting just to see what happens experiment it's so much fun this is a cocktail stick you it's similar to the twig in a way you get finer lines but I love all these lovely thin lines it creates 
Now what I'm doing now is the painting is still wet or damp but I'm very carefully peeling off the framing tape and I've got sort of quite hard edges there but don't worry I'm going to show you what to do with those but look I've got all this lovely light now this could be water the light on the water I'm using my spritzer bottle and what I'm doing is I'm just spritzing the edge of that I'm leaving the center sort of hopefully no, not much spray on there but just around the edge so that because it's still damp the paint will start to move as you can see it is now and what I'm doing is I'm just using that wet paint now to go over that light area crisscrossing now this could be twigs in front of the water or it could be reflections in the water I mean it doesn't matter does it it's the lovely thing about painting like this it's not um, photographic it's very expressive and uh, it, it's sort of it's it's just a great way of spending an afternoon you know you really can feel quite liberated and not so scared of ruining your painting of overworking it just experiment tell yourself you're just practicing so I'm using an old bristle brush there just to sort of blend and soften some edges on the outside edge here as well so I've got a little sort of porcelain pot here and I'm mixing up some ultramarine with Payne's grey using my size 8 brush and what I'm doing is I'm using a pipette and I'm just sort of squeezed all that dark paint now and I'm actually just sort of squeezing that and drip it, drizzling it onto the damp surface don't worry about all the rules here if the painting's almost dry just go for it see what happens you can learn so much about watercolor painting in this way but this is really kind of dark against the light of the water and what I quite like is the way the dark paint the top right hand side there is running into some of those marks I made earlier and I'm just sort of squeezing on some dark paint here as well with the pipette you can use a dropper or even just a you can sort of put it load your brush and sort of squeeze the brush with your fingertips and allow that to drop onto your painting as well and I'm just sort of scratching in with the pipette here to make some thin lines if you think about nature somewhere wild you know where there's trees and grasses it would look all sort of a tangle of all these different sort of greens and textures and things like that and that's what's so liberating about painting in this style so I'm again tilting just just to see if anything interesting happens get things moving don't ever get, kind of get too tight when you're painting in this sort of uh, in this way just enjoy it so I'm using a little bit more brush -o here the gray brush -o, tapping the bottom there's a little little um, hole I made in the top with a push pin so it sort of stops loads of brush -o from coming out what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let my painting dry give the salt a chance to work and it, I really love the effect there of the salt I'm using my size 8 brush with some Payne's grey and I just thought I'd give my abstract painting a bit of structure so I'm just painting in a sort of tree trunk here the wax resist is to the left of it so I want that to look like the light on the left of the tree and I'm just carefully painting that wet on dry I'm actually using an old scourer sponge here and I've mixed up some very dark green paint using a little bit of the burnt sienna with some of the ultramarine with a touch of yellow and I'm just tapping in very gently some of this dark here just at the sort of water's edge so I've got lovely texture and dark against light as well I'm just mixing up a lighter green here adding a little bit of the yellow there with a, some of the I'm actually using a little bit of phthalo turquoise as well to get this brighter green and I'm using the sponge now and tapping sort of quite gently um, on to the dry surface here and it sort of just creates some lovely texture these um, scourers so it's a little bit of recycling as well you notice I've got little white spots on my the back of my hand there I have actually been doing some painting earlier um, what I usually do as well with the sponge I get asked this question is do you use a dry or wet sponge I always wet the sponge first wring all the water out and then mix up some quite creamy watercolor and then start sponging and never press too hard so I'm actually using a sword liner brush here and it's quite nice for painting branches I will put a link for the brush in the description below but it's sort of the hairs of the brush are quite wide near the ferrule and at the top it's almost like a rigger so you can sort of get sort of wider branches at the trunk end and then as you go out 
um, to the top of the branch um, it gets thinner and thinner it's quite nice um, they do take a little bit of practice though but I'm just going to paint lots and lots of twigs and branches here with the sword liner brush working pretty much wet on dry with Payne's grey So I'm just mixing up more of a limey green colour now and I'm just painting this sort of quite creamy colour in just to create a, a lighter green um, sort of in contrast with that Payne's grey pretty much wet on dry and this is literally yellow straight from the tube here to introduce a little bit more light as well just in the sort of middle distance there. So I've uh, watered down this limey green. This is the Thalo turquoise with the yellow, the lemon yellow, and I'm just spattering it now with uh, my sword liner brush still. And it is quite messy, so do make sure you sort of haven't got any valuables lying around. So I'm finishing off my watercolor now with some white gouache slightly watered down, and I'm spattering it just to add a little bit of sparkle to my painting, a bit of light and texture. And I've decided also to use my natural sponge. I've rinsed it in clean water, wrung out all of the excess water, and now I'm printing using creamy paint here, the Thalo turquoise with the lemon yellow, just to give a bit more color to this painting to finish it off. Remember to tap very gently with your sponge. And if you like this sort of content, and if you'd like to learn more about watercolor, why not support me on my Patreon membership? You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and extended tutorials. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.